Tonight, a Fox News exclusive. We greet an Afghan combat translator and his family as they arrive in the U.S. This comes as thousands of other interpreters de desperately seek visas to leave Afghanistan before the last U.S. troops are gone and the Taliban comes to hunt them down. National security correspondent Jennifer Griffin has the story tonight. Military veterans from the American Legion and No One Left Behind waited for three hours at Dulles International Airport outside Washington, D.C., to greet this Afghan combat translator who risked his life for the U.S. military for years and finally received his special immigrant visa to the U.S. on May 27th as U.S. troops hastened their withdrawal. Fearful the Taliban will target his family back in Afghanistan, he asked that we refer to him by a pseudonym. We'll call him Sadiq. Although it was a long journey for us. The visa process took a long time, like three and a half years. But finally, I, they, they made it. They, How do you feel now that you're here? Uh, I feel safe, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I feel really good because I survived from many threats. And then there was Sam, an Iraqi translator who became the State Department's first special immigrant visa recipient in 2006 and now serves in the U.S. Air Force. He came to welcome Sadiq and his family to America. I was in their shoes one day, over 15 years ago, and I, I really appreciated the fact that I was welcomed by a lot of people and those who made me feel that this is my, my home now. Sam testified in 2007 about the dangers faced by those working with the U.S. military. Senator Ted Kennedy took up his case and the special immigrant visa program was born. I honestly believed I would be killed. My name was listed on the doors of several mosques calling for my death. For Sadiq, who arrived with his wife and four children for a new life in the U.S., sponsored by the nonprofit Keeping Our Promise Rochester, his fortune is bittersweet. Are you worried about those who are waiting in Afghanistan? Of course, of course. We hope that they should not get forgot and they should get fully supported and they should receive their visa like me and they should come to the United States and start a better life. What will happen if the U.S. doesn't bring them here? The bad guys will find them and they will kill them. I've seen this scenario in Iraq and I, I would hate to see it happen again in Afghanistan. They would more, most certainly be targeted by Taliban and killed as a result. U.S. officials say there is no plan to evacuate these Afghan translators. Evacuation is the wrong word. We're determined to make good on our obligation to those who helped us. But the U.S. Embassy visa section is closed for interviews due to COVID. Lawmakers are demanding President Biden act. If he doesn't act and he doesn't get these people out, blood will be on his hands and on his administration's hands. There is a moral imperative at play here. The American handshake has to mean something. 18,000 Afghans who risked their lives for the U.S. are still waiting. At Dulles Airport, Jennifer Griffin, Fox News. We'll continue to follow that story. Up hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.